Right, you're laying down your fabric pieces onto your fabric. You want to make sure that the straight frame is measured from the edge of the fabric. Make sure you're working on a hard surface, pin it all out, cut it to the line. Cut carefully around those curves and angles because they make a difference when you're sewing it up. And clip in 5mm at all your markings so that you can match them up front to front, back to back, etc. And make sure you do a mark of some sort with dot, pin or chalk. Fold one of the gusset pieces lengthways and pin it from the opening to the dart and sew this. Once sewn, clip it and press to one side. You'll be sandwiching the box front and back pattern piece between two gussets. First you're going to place one gusset, right side facing, on top of the front. So both right sides are facing. Then you're going to pin the back inside gusset. It will be with the right side facing, but your front will be wrong side facing. Once you've done this and sewn these two together, you'll find a hidden seam, which makes it comfortable to the wearer. You need to sew this seam carefully especially at the curve, and make sure that you sort of pull out the fabric at the bottom of the front so that it doesn't inadvertently get sewn into the seam. You want to trim the curve of the seam to 5mm, then grade it. That's when you are reducing the bulk. You've got three different widths of your seam allowance. This helps to make it just sit nicely and clip the curve of the seam every one centimetre. You don't have to do it up the straight edge. Now we open it up so we've got the right side of the box of front and back facing, the right side of the gusset. We lay the second front and back of the boxer with the right side facing so we don't have it wopsy-turvy. And then we flip it over and place it down onto that first gusset pin it at the top, the marking and the inner leg seam. Once we've done that, we diagonally roll up the box of front that's on top. Kind of like an ice cream cone. You want the skinniest part down the bottom because if it's too bulky, you'll sew it into the seam and we do not like undoing zigzag stitch. Then you roll up the second front and back of the boxer so you'll end up with two skinny waffle cones. And then the bottom gusset, you pull that out, up and over those two box of fronts and back pieces. And you end up matching it with the other gusset and you pin it together. And you end up encasing those two main box of pieces. Make sure your pins are going with the seam, not across. And you end up with something that looks like a long rabbit head with two ears sticking out the top. You're probably wondering how this is going to turn out like a pair of boxes, but it will. Again, sew the seam carefully. You need to take your time. You don't want excess fabric of the box of front and back going into the seam. And especially at the curve and as you get down to the bottom, there is very little room for play. And you need to make sure you kind of pull it out, push it out, so that it won't get sewn up. Again, we trim it, grade it, and clip it. And we're going to have the big reveal. We pull out those rabbit ears. And there we have the gusset with the enclosed hidden seams. Nice and tidy. Give it a press. Okay, so we're up to the back crotch. We have the right sides of the front facing you. Bring the back seams up together and pin them, and then we're going to sew them together. Zigzag stitch. 
and then when we've finished the seam we're going to clip the curve and we can press it flat as well. Right, so now we're pinning the front to the back of the sh very short inner leg seam. It's pretty tiny. Um, make sure you flatten out that back seam and sew it carefully because it is so little and try and get that one centimetre seam allowance. When we're finished, we're going to trim just to make it nice and tidy. And I end up trimming the corners that kind of evolved from that seam allowance and it just reduces the bulk when you're hemming. Right, so we're hemming our two leg openings. I'm using a little ruler that you can measure to 1.5 centimetres, fold your fabric over and pin it on the right side and then once it's all done lickety split it's ready to hem and I use a twin needle which sews two parallel rows of straight stitch on top and a zigzag stitch underneath which helps to neaten the fabric and again we need to make sure we keep our work tidy so we trim our threads and we trim the excess fabric underneath and sometimes when you sew really well there's none to trim Okay, so we're setting up for the elastic. We're going to use the pattern to figure out where we want it for folded over or attached elastic. Measure the elastic you need. Read the sheet prior uh, to know how much to get. Overlap it by two centimetres and sew it with a zigzag to catch all the elastic. And you want to split the large opening of the boxes into four, starting at the centre back back and then get your front and then from those to find your sides. Do the same for the elastic and that way you're ready to put it in for the casing elastic or put it in for the attached elastic. Okay so for the casing elastic we put it on to the inside of the boxes, fold the fabric over about three to four centimetres and pin it on the right side so that when we top stitch it, you know, the pins are there. Um, and then once the pins are in place all the way around, we're ready to top stitch and encase the elastic. Again, I'm using a twin needle. You can use zigzag and you can use the running stitch because both of those will also stretch when uh, moved. And... Just remember to stretch the elastic, not the fabric, when you're sewing it and trim the excess fabric on the inside very carefully because sometimes you can nip at the fabric and the finished casing box. And now we've got the elastic attached. Loop the elastic on the right side of the fabric and line up all those quarter pins, starting with the back, then the front, then the two sides, and pin it on the right side, obviously, all the way around. And again, when we uh, either pin the elastic or sew the elastic on, make sure that you've evened out your elastic, and when you're sewing it, you don't stretch the fabric, you just stretch the elastic. Again, twin needle, zigzag, running stitch, is used. Take your time so that the elastic is attached and is neatly sewn on and therefore comfortable to your child. I trim off my double twin needle threads just as I get to them and once we're finished we trim away that excess fabric. Again be careful trimming because you might cut the fabric and voila finished boxes with attached. Elastic.